As you can see, we're in the dark. And it's not just a belated nod to Halloween. It's a taste of what one noted journalist says could happen if a hacker managed to sabotage America's power grids. Our cover story is reported by Chip Reed. When the lights go out, we usually know why. Hurricane Sandy coming ashore on the East Coast. Mother Nature is at it again. Most of the time, we manage to get through it. But what if the power went out in a number of states, affecting millions of people for weeks, even months? As you were researching this, did you personally find yourself getting frightened? I think frightened is a little bit too strong, but maybe I should have been. Yes, it's frightening. It is frightening enough that uh, my wife and I decided we were going to buy enough freeze-dried food for all of our kids and their kids. In his book, Lights Out, veteran journalist Ted Koppel paints a grim picture of a paralyzing power outage in the form of an all-out cyber attack on the nation's electrical grid. Who are the potential perpetrators here? Who do we have to fear the most? Is it Russia, China, Iran, terrorists, yep. uh, individual actors? All those. The interesting thing, Chip, is um, the ones who are most capable are the ones least likely to do it. There are some experts who say they're already in. Oh, they are in. They are in. There in. is no question about it. They're they, into our grid. They are already in the grid. I was told that by the former chief scientist of NSA. He stated categorically the Russians are in, the Chinese are in. The Iranians may be on the verge of getting in. And then at the bottom of the capability scale are folks like ISIS, terrorist groups. The power grid is the system interconnecting North America's supply of electricity. If one area has particularly heavy demand, power from another region can sometimes serve as backup. The downside to all this? If a hacker manages to take down an entire grid, a huge portion of the country, along with parts of Canada, could go down with it. The primary reason? Like so much else these days, the grid relies heavily on the internet. We have a sort of a joke in our, our security industry that there's, there's no secure system. The only secure one is uh, unplugged, turned off, and buried under six feet of concrete. Larry Pesci should know. He's a cybersecurity consultant who gets paid to find glitches in business computer networks. In other words, he's a hacker who works for the good guys. In the last six years you know, of me doing testing uh, full time, um, there has never been a customer that we've been to that we have not gotten in. At 528 Tuesday evening, give or take a few seconds, an estimated 30 million people in the northeastern United States were plunged into an eerie blackness. Wide-scale outages are nothing new. In 1965, a huge blackout in the northeast left more than 30 million without power for almost 13 hours. New Yorkers have taken it in stride, have they, as far as you've been able to see? No, they haven't. You can ask them that. <laughs> In 1977, New York City was plunged into darkness again, this time resulting in looting and other crimes. There have been massive power outages, blackouts. And in 2003, overgrown trees were partly to blame for a blackout that affected eight states and part of Canada, some 50 million people. That one lasted up to four days in some areas. But our next electric failure could be just a keystroke away. I'm not sure I know why it hasn't happened yet. It's, it's definitely not for, you know, not for lack of capability on various parts, uh, whether it be us or, or uh, an enemy. Um, I, I think it comes down to timing, and I, I think we need to make the right people mad at the right time. You would think the one entity that would be ready for something like this is the Department of Homeland Security. Yes. Are they ready? No. I mean, I've talked to every former Secretary of Homeland Security, and they all acknowledge there is no plan. He says the current secretary, Jay Johnson, didn't offer much guidance either. You described the conversation as prickly at one point. Well, it got prickly because I kept asking, what's the plan? 
why wait until disaster strikes? Why not tell him, do you have a plan? And he just sort of pointed up at a shelf uh, filled with white binders, and he said, look, I'm sure there's something up there somewhere. We wanted to find out for ourselves, but both the White House and the Department of Energy declined our requests for an on-camera interview. The Department of Homeland Security also refused to speak on camera. Instead, we were given a statement, which reads in part, to be clear, the Department of Homeland Security has a plan. We, along with the Department of Energy, coordinate national efforts to strengthen the security and resilience of the electric grid. We also work with energy sector partners to promote the security and resilience of the grid through myriad activities both seen and unseen. Next, we reached out to some of the big electric companies. They refused to speak with us as well. Ted Koppel says the government basically has no plan. Is he right? No, he's not right. So we turned to Paul Stockton, a former Defense Department official whose duties included cybersecurity. The government is building plans very, very quickly now to help manage the consequences of an attack on the, on the grid, but also to make sure that government systems are more resilient against attack. Are the power companies today prepared to respond to a large-scale cyber attack on the grid? Power companies today are strengthening their ability to respond to an attack and restore power more quickly. Still, Stockton admits. Their readiness is not where it needs to be, given that the adversary continues to strengthen the sophistication of the weapons that will be used against the United States. Ironically, it's our less sophisticated electric providers who may have an edge here. This is uh, the South Canal system. Take the Delta Montrose Electric Association in southwest Colorado, one of 900 rural power cooperatives in the United States. It serves some 28,000 customers and is far less internet dependent. CEO Jason Bronick. To what degree do you rely on the internet? Uh, you know, most of our internet is uh, for non-critical functions. If somebody hacked into your system, how vulnerable would you be? All of our systems are put in place and have an extensive amount of backups, and we have manual overrides that would allow us to continue to operate. Would you consider changing to a system that relies heavily on the internet? Uh, we would not. Rural co-ops account for just about 12% of America's power distribution, servicing approximately 42 million people in 47 states. None of these co-ops relies on the internet for the distribution of power. Well, but uh, as Koppel sees it, it's good. too late for utilities elsewhere to follow suit and pull the online plug. I don't think we're ever gonna give up the internet. There are too many advantages to the internet, even if it has the capacity to wreak enormous damage. And all I'm saying is, at least wake up to what its capabilities are. And since there's no turning back, it's important to think ahead. So what does the average family actually need to be doing? Do they need to be, as Ted Koppel has done, stocking up on water and freeze-dried food? I think those are very important uh, measures. Average citizens need to be able to take care of their own families and their own neighborhoods and their own communities and not assume that Uncle Sam is somehow going to magically bring in the cavalry and rescue them. In the uh, beginning of the book, before the first page, you said to our grandchildren, you right. named your seven grandchildren, yeah. and then you said, here's hoping that Opie, meaning you, That's me. got it wrong. Right. You think you might have gotten it wrong? Of course. I mean, there's a possibility. Do I believe I got it wrong? No, I spent a year and a half trying to get it right, uh, and unfortunately, I think I did.